Sorry if you can hear our dryer squeaking in the background, but before you get into this video, I just wanted to let you know that I filmed a lot of this earlier this year, earlier this season, and so I've learned a lot since then, and I'm not putting ice in my plants anymore because I learned that it shocks them, and I'm not watering them on a schedule anymore because now I'm learning that you just look at the plant, assess the soil, and then decide if they need water. They can't be watered based on a calendar. And a lot of them are growing and doing really well and have bloomed since then. My front porch gets full sun. So a lot of those are pretty much wiped out. They just got too hot and even with good watering, they just, they're just gone. They served us well while they were there and now they're done. But my plants in my backyard are still doing well. My cabbage are huge and healthy and my pea plants are delicious. I go out every day and just like sample a pea and see if they're ready to be picked yet. And my sunflowers, I think I say this in the video, but they're over my fence and some of them, including the pot, are taller than me and I'm 5'4". So I hope you enjoy this video of a quick little plant tour and I hope that you get as much enjoyment from seeing my plants as I have been getting from taking care of them. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, The Daily Deals. Today I want to give you a tour of all of my plants that I've been growing this season, so come on in. So first up is my corn plant. This lives in the upstairs guest bedroom because it is toxic to cats, so I like to be able to put it in there and shut the door. It doesn't need a lot of light and it doesn't need a lot of water. Another plant I keep upstairs is this jade plant. She's really pretty. She's growing pretty well up here in our bedroom because it's nice and dark. She is pretty easy to take care of. Doesn't need a lot of water put a few ice cubes in them and all of my indoor plants every Sunday and then every other Sunday I water them with cactus juice. This is in our bedroom and Einstein sleeps in here with us but for some reason he never tries to jump up here which I'm thankful for because that's where I keep my jade plant but we also keep her in here so that when we're gone there's no mischief and Einstein doesn't try to eat my jade plant. This is what I guess you would call my mother pothos. This is what I purchased from the lady in North Pole on the Facebook Marketplace. And I've already propagated a little bit, but I do think now that I have more containers, I'll probably cut this down a bit and look, I could get a bunch of, bunch of plants out of that. And then this is Vera. I inherited Vera from a friend when she moved. There were two of these aloe sprigs in one plant and they were doing great. For almost six months, they were doing awesome. They were sitting on my windowsill in the kitchen. And then I not so cautiously moved her to the front so she could get more sun and she got root rot. <laughs> so I replanted her in this pot that will help her hold on to a little bit of water but not too much. So now I don't move her around and she just stays here. Well, this is Vera one. She has a twin sister. So this is my Easter Lily cactus. This is also inherited from my friend before she moved away. And I've kept it alive for well, at least since November. And look, she's doing so well. In fact, from my research, this is new growth. So she's doing great sitting up here. As you can see, my front window has added two sets of hens and chicks and I repotted my Easter Lily cactus. This is a Jester's Crown Fern that I got. I think it is so fun and I miss the leaves occasionally, but I read that it wasn't necessary, so I only do it every now and then. And this is my Creeping Jenny that is just so pretty in that bird pot. I have had this little friend hanging in the corner on this macrame hanger for, this was another one that I inherited from my friend when she moved away. I literally just looked up what it was yesterday and I've already forgotten <laughs> but I think she's really nice. Pothos can do really nicely in your bathroom because that's usually a low light room in the home and I think they add a little something special to have some greenery. I also have these propagating in here so that I can close the door and I don't have to worry about the cat 
getting into them. This is one of my new babies. I'm gonna take him off the shelf so you can see. This is my burrow's tail. I wanted one of these so badly, and I finally was able to, it wasn't that I was able to find one, but I finally had the confidence to say, I'm gonna get this and it's gonna stay alive. So this is my little burrow's tail. These planters have a little reservoir in the bottom that helps them hold onto water when they need it. This is a leaf from Jade that I'm trying to propagate. And this is just a little wee yogurt container. This is a really good container to propagate plants with. And this is a fake succulent. <laughs> and that's a dead bug. Where'd it come from? And you know, I've got a little snail in the corner watching over all my plants. I recently got this African violet because my me mama told me that she always has one in her kitchen. It sits near the windowsill where Einstein likes to be, so it has cat hair all over it, but I think it's so cute. So those are all of my indoor plants right now. So now let's check out what's on the front porch. So these first two planters are ones that Brian put together to attract butterflies and bees. You'll see this little snow princess, which is like ground cover, and then these snapdragons. Brian took a chance on these this year and it ended up being one of our favorite flowers that we grew. In this basket, we have red hot sallies, which are a type of salvia and dahlias. And then later we had some white blooms in there from the ground cover, but I love those red hot sallies. They're so fun. And then some African daisies as well. And these are my wild Alaskan irises. They are gorgeous. They take no maintenance. They come back every year. And I love these in my yard, but you can see them all along the highways as well. Also, I did some marigolds to keep mosquitoes away. More beautiful white snapdragons that bloomed a little bit later. Petunias are really hardy and popular in Alaska, and I love these purple ones. I think they're called Galaxy or Skyliners or Headliners, something like that. But they are gorgeous. I used to not like petunias because they were just everywhere in Alaska, but they are beautiful and I will definitely be getting lots next summer. This is a custom made wreath by my friend Shannon. It's so beautiful and whimsical and fun. And my little gnomes, I love gnomes. I have them all over the place. These are forget-me-nots. They ended up having little blooms that came a little later. This is the Alaska State Flower. More forget-me-nots, more dahlias, and more forget-me-nots. Dahlias were another one of Brian's favorites this year, and he took a lot of macro shots of them with his camera. And wild sunflowers, these ended up not doing as well as my big, tall sunflowers in the back. Here's my front porch, I love it. You'll notice the two little houses up there for bees and butterflies. My strawberry plants are still growing nicely, but no fruit yet. And these are Inca gold marigolds. They're nice and tall, and I just love their big round shape and their vibrant color. And my peony bush, which ended up finally blooming. I had to wait a full year to get blooms from this bush, but this is the Sarah Bernhardt variety, and hopefully next year I'll have even more blooms. Let me show you what I've got in the backyard. So these are the sunflowers I'm growing, and they've actually grown quite a bit since I filmed this. They're actually up to the top of the fence, and some, including their pot, are taller than me. These are my double impatience. I think they're so cute. They just look like tiny little pink roses, and these blooms have kept going all season. This is my bell pepper. Still no luck with this really. It just hasn't been hot enough, even with my makeshift greenhouse. This broccoli has since been harvested and it was delicious. Probably the best broccoli I've ever had. It grew so much bigger and made for a delicious dinner. And these are my peas. They're now starting to grow and they're so yummy. I pick one off every day to eat. And more sunflowers. We made it to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching my plant tour video. If you are an experienced gardener and you noticed that I made a mistake or that I'm taking care of one of my plants wrong, please 
drop me a comment and let me know because I want to be better at this. I'm pretty much starting from scratch. Before this year, I would describe myself as not being good at taking care of plants and I'm working hard to change that about myself. So if you notice something that I can do better, drop me a comment and let me know. Thanks again so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next one.